Hello and welcome to Goonies World. My name is Goonie, also known as Colin, and I am joined, as always, by Johnny Farrow, also known as Sean. Hi there. And we have Meanie, also known as Ryan. Being mean is my scene. (laughs) That's not true at all. Yeah, uh, and then we also have our special guest, Lunicorn, also known as Lynn. Hello, hello! Yeah, you know, our longtime listeners will recognize Lynn. She's been our guest on every single one of our Halloween specials, and we're going to play a horror-themed game tonight, so it's appropriate that she's here. But before we start, I wanted to say we just recently learned uh, that we've reached a milestone of 10,000 downloads. That might not be a lot if you're Critical Role or Adventure Zone or whoever, but I think we're all pleased about that. And I want to thank our listeners, especially our regular listeners like Joe Scharf and Scott Chafin and Chris Gert and Dennis Lewis. Those are just a few I can name off the top of my head that I know about. So if you are a regular listener or even an irregular listener, thank you. And as always, let us know you're out there. Send us an email at goonysworldpodcast at gmail.com. Let us know what games you want us to play. If you've written a game you want us to play, let us know. If it's not super complicated, we'll give it a try. With a few exceptions, we gravitate towards rules light games, like the one we're going to play tonight. So for the next few weeks, in fact, we will play Horrid Mysteries, a pamphlet of gothic horror by Jacob Marx. It was apparently written for the 2021 one-page RPG jam. You can find it at itch.io. It's a rules light game, almost to the point of being vague. Uh, We make a lot of rules mistakes on this podcast, but this game doesn't have that many rules that we can screw up. And we're also going to try something a little different this time and do all of our games set up live. I mean, usually our GM creates an adventure and then the players generate characters ahead of time. But this time we're going to do all that as we go because that's kind of the way the game is set up. And so, you know, even the adventure elements of who the bad guy is and what the setting is will generate right here and right now. So we will have to be creative on the spot and work together to set up this adventure before we dive into it. So who knows, this adventure might even be all set up. And we might not even get to the actual story until next time, but we'll see. So because of that, we should probably go ahead and get started. I'm going to read right from the rules here so you've got a good sense of the the game. Horrid Mysteries is a simple tabletop role-playing game meant to evoke the feeling of a gothic horror story. All you need to play is a deck of standard playing cards. All the players and the game master take on the role of people caught up in a terrifying situation that has haunted them for years. And on this night, everyone is gathered once again to somehow resolve the situation haunting them. The Game Master also controls the setting and the adversary who has affected all the characters so. And the game begins as the Game Master's character sets the stage for why everyone's gathered, and then every player character will tell their story and how they were changed by the events of the past. And finally, we'll get to the actual game, and the players will work together to resolve the situation by whatever means they can. And whenever there's an uncertain situation, we'll draw cards. But we're also going to draw cards to create our characters. And uh, I think that uh, Ryan's pretty quick on his feet, so I think we'll start with him. Now, we're just using one deck of cards. That's how the game is set up. And we're in remote locations, so I've got the actual deck of cards. So when we say Ryan's drawing a card, it'll be me drawing a card and holding it up so Ryan can see it. But about really the only free choice uh, in terms of uh, your character is uh, gender. Cause we're going to randomly determine the names from the names in this game. So, uh, Ryan, would you prefer to have a male or a female gender in this game, not in real life? Um, I don't really care. Um, it's been a long time since I've heard you be a woman. He's only had one female character that I can think of which is foreign I was at a party she once where I saw Ryan and Ryan in complete drag at a party once so I saw that mystery. too yeah. we were all yeah, at that party there. except oh, yeah. well, 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 no that was not Lynn was not yeah I don't think Lynn was there but yes but, I, yeah. I was in a dress and, and I want our listeners and all sorts of stuff 
I want our listeners to know Ryan makes a really, really hot girl when he gets all dragged up. So I want you to imagine that while you're listening to him. Yeah. But, yeah, you did play Farin once, who was a lady. But how, how about this game? Would you prefer a male or a female character? Or a male or a um, female name? Oh. To, yeah. Well, I, yeah, um, we'll go. Let's go. I, 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 I tend to do male voices uh, more convincingly, so let's go with <laughs> yeah, you think? Yeah, I think you're probably right. Okay, so I've got the cards here. You can hear me flipping through the, the deck of cards there. I'm just going to draw a card, and this is going to be your first name, okay? So we have here Queen of Hearts, uh, and you're a male, so your first name is Percival. Percival. You might want to make a note of awesome. that. Awesome. I love it. Yeah, I do too. I do too. I'm going to make a note of that myself. Percival. So Ryan's first name is Percival. And we need to find out Ryan's last name. So we're going to draw another card here, which is the Nine of Diamonds. And so your last name is Scorbeck. And so Ryan. Nice. Percival, how do you spell that? Percival Scorbeck is Ryan's character. And I know how to spell Percival. How do you spell Scoreback? Yeah, well, the way this game spells it is S-K-O-R-B-E-C-K. In fact, the author of this game says that the names that were are taken, this, this table of names are taken from Ben Milton's game Maze Rats, which is a cool game we should try playing sometime. But So we have Percival Scoreback, and I think before we finish Ryan's character entirely, we'll just each go around and get our names. So... Let's go on to Colin. And Colin, uh, what is the gender of the character you would like to play? Uh, I will go with male because I've got okay. a couple voices ready, depending on you know which name I get, whatever it kind of sounds like. I've got several okay. voices to choose from. Okay, great. So I'm drawing the card, and up oh, we have the Joker. We have to put it back in. Okay. So we don't use the Joker for that. Your name is Joker. No. So I'm drawing another card, and it is the Two of Hearts. So your first name is Chadwick. First name is Chadwick. <laughs> okay. okay. Goonie's first name is Chadwick. So I don't know if you have a Chadwick voice in you. Yeah. And I'm drawing a second yes, card I've, for your... That would be more of a British accent, I think. I think that's appropriate. And we're drawing uh, now for your last name. I have the Ten of Clubs. And so your last name will be Southwark. Or if you were British, it would be like Southark, right? Wouldn't they say, they wouldn't say the Wark. I think they'd say Southark. 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 But it's spelled Southwark is how it's spelled. Southark. British people, please educate us. Or people who wish they were British. And I know a few of those. Uh... (laughs) <laughs> so now finally Lynn Lynn would you like to play a male or female character I would like to play a female this evening so I can be a southern belle okay that's probably appropriate and I'm going to go ahead and draw a card and look on the female table and we have the eight of hearts and so your first name is Orchid Lovely is my favorite kind of flower. Lovely. And so Orchid lovely. is your first name. And then drawing on our for our last name, we have the Ace of Clubs, which gives you a weird last name, Caliver. C-A-L-A-V-E-R. Orchid Caliver. Okay, so so far we have Ryan playing Percival Scorbeck, Goonie playing Chadwick Southark. And Lynn playing Orchid Caliver. And now that we're not done with our characters, of course, there's a few more things about our characters that we want to know. And, in fact, technically we're supposed to do some of this GM stuff first, so we'll do that, and then we'll get into the other stuff about your characters. We need to determine the setting of our adventure. And so I'm going to draw a card... And this will determine our setting. I have here a diamond. It could be any diamonds, but any diamond card means that the primary action of our game will be set in a tomb slash graveyard. 
So I'm picturing like a bigger tomb on a graveyard, like where Spike lives on Buffy. Yeah. You know, kind of one of those walk-in mausoleum style tombs is probably best, right? And with a graveyard surrounding it. So our setting is going to be in a tomb or graveyard, and again, I'll I'll think of it as a larger mausoleum, like a walk-in type of mausoleum. And then a very very important thing is we need to figure out who our adversary is, and I'm going to draw a card i have an eight so our adversary is a demon okay. our adversary will be a, a demon okay very good now we can get back to our characters and going back to ryan uh everybody has a calamity or you might think of it as a disadvantage of some kind that you'll have to fit into your character concept and so we're going to have Ryan draw a card here, and we have here, is that a jack? Yes, that's a jack, and that means Ryan is a nihilist. <laughs> he believes in nothing. So I don't know how you work that into the game, but but uh, we know that Percival Scoreback is a nihilist. And I guess he must at least believe in demons, or maybe he doesn't. That's the whole point. Uh, let's find out about Chadwick Southark's calamity. We're gonna Goonie is going to virtually reach through cyberspace and draw a card out of my deck, and he has a queen. And Chadwick uh, is a coward. Oh. <laughs> so you're a coward, Chadwick. And our friend Lynn, we're thinking about Orchid Caliver and what her calamity is. We. Lynn draws a card, and uh, she's insane. How fun. Okay? So, yeah, how Very fun. Very fun. So, I love Orchid it. Orchid is insane. Okay. So, Percival Scoreback is a nihilist. Chadwick Southwark is a coward. And Orchid Caliber is insane. And, but you need not worry because you won't just have a calamity in your life. You will have a boon as well. Now, there's fewer of these, and we could potentially double up because he's just uh, all that matters is the suit that you draw. So, we could potentially have somebody with two of the same boons. But going back to Percival, we'll see what his boon is. And we have a diamond, which means that he has incredible fighting skill. Like, more so than anyone else. So, probably some background as a fighter well, of some sort. It's better that yes. he has that rather than the coward. Because then it wouldn't come into hardly right, any use, right. probably. Yeah, but what's the point in fighting? Okay. Yeah, there's then no there's... point to anything. <laughs> there's that, yeah. <laughs> Don't believe it. Yeah. Well, uh, so, we have Percival Scorbeck, a nihilistic fighter... Uh, perhaps he's a pugilist, perhaps he's a soldier, we don't know. All these things will emerge during play. And I'm sure we're all curious about Chadwick's boon. So Goonie magically draws a card from my deck. And we have clubs, which means Chadwick has scientific yes, course, knowledge. Scientific, yes. And <clears throat> these boons, of course, are meant to help you bring something into play that will help you defeat the adversary and then <clears throat> so yes we have Chadwick Southwark the cowardly scientist and Orchid Caliver what is her boon we are going to draw a card for her and you know what that was another clubs but we don't need two scientists and so I'm not even going to count that club I'm putting it back in the deck I'm cheating Putting it back in the deck because in this game the deck gets smaller and smaller. When we runs out of when we run out of cards, everyone's screwed. So I'm putting that back in and just to keep the characters a little different. We'll give Orchid a different boon, and I have here a spade, which means that you have occult Excellent. knowledge. Okay, so it's going to be up to you to narrate later how your occult knowledge helps. And, of course, you've had no time to do research into demonology. But I know you've watched, like, every season of Supernatural. <laughs> so you should have a pretty good idea of, uh, yeah. So there we have 
almost everything we need to know about our characters. But finally, each oh. of you has something useful. Useful Did accoutrement or piece of equipment. Give her yes, Colin. Uh, a calamity. <coughs> Yes, I'm insane. I did. She's I'm okay, insane. Then, all right. Well, you can just edit that fucking shit out. And, and then we did it. <laughs> Guys, I'm, Dooney is stupid, so we're <laughs> editing it out. All right. He dumb. He dumb as hell. What's right. the point in being small? No, you don't have to edit that out. Edit. All right. It's fine. <laughs> Maybe we won't edit it, you know. Hey, guess what, listeners? We edit... I mean, we're being very transparent about everything else in this episode. We're making everything up as we go along. But, yeah, hey, sometimes we if I Okay. And, if, uh, if I make a joke out of being stupid, you can leave it in. If I don't make a joke, that means I really said something really stupid, and you should edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, All guess right. what? It's in. Okay. and But you're going to have a useful accoutrement or a piece of equipment, something helpful to you in your adventure. So going back to Percival Scoreback, we are drawing. We have a, a. You might want to trade, but oddly enough, you have a medical or scientific kit, Percival. Well, don't see much point in that. It says you can't trade. <laughs> medical or scientific kit is your useful you accoutrement. Must have stolen that. And we'll beat up. I'll beat up Chadwick, Chadwick for it. Happens. Ironically, ironically, Chadwick is clubs, which is a or spade, which is a gun or other weapon. Nice. <laughs> so I think you guys might have got, you might have each <laughs> yeah. grabbed each other's bag. We, there was a <laughs> you know mix up at um, the airport or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gun or other weapon. Yeah, and you can certainly once the game starts, hey, do what you want with your accoutrements, right? Um, and orchid calivers. Useful accoutrement is, well, this is perfect, really, because she has here Ace of Hearts, and that would be Holy Slash Occult Tools. That one worked out great. So, Holy or Occult Tools, that could be anything from Holy Water to a cross to something darker or more occult. Uh, Ouija board, I don't know. I don't know what Occult Tools would be. That's for you to make up. Now, there's also a game master character, like my. I'm playing the character who brought you all here to to solve this problem once and for all. So, I'm going to need to create my game master character. And I was going to do just a this full on Vincent Price, but I can't really do a Vincent Price voice, can I? It doesn't sound like Vincent Price. It sounds like David Lopan. But um, we'll see. Maybe the name will suggest something for me. So. I'm going to draw a card for my first name, and my first name is Erasmus. 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 And my Game Master character's last name is Derip. (laughs) It's D-E space capital R-I-P-P-E. Erasmus Derip. Derip. He's Rippy or Reap? Reap I don't know. I'm going to call him your... Erasmus de Rip. De Rip. <laughs> um, <laughs> Erasmus de Rip. Okay. And then let's see. I guess Erasmus uh, needs a calamity. Drawing the cards. I have here five visions. Okay. He has visions. Visions has, have brought him here, and perhaps that will. Now, that's obviously not going to come in handy because it's a calamity, but if you can make a calamity work for you, so much the better. Drawing for Boone, I find... Oh, there's that fucking joker again. Okay, so uh, I don't even want to tell you this, but my I've drawn the joker for the Boone. It's one time you don't put the joker back in. Erasmus must betray the party. Love to have kept that a secret. But We're all about well, transparency today. so He may not be happy yeah. about it. That's right. It was all about transparency. At some point in our story, Erasmus will probably betray the party, which I guess is more appropriate for a game master character. And then <clears throat> I notice how they keep that. I notice how they consider that a boon, <laughs> you know, like as somehow a good thing um, for Erasmus. And then finally, 
I drew another spade, so he also has a gun or other weapon for his accoutrement. All right. So, now we know that this is where it gets tricky, right? Because we've done, like, no prep. This is a test of my ability as a game master to start, you know, wheeling a story out of here. But we should we could decide together. This is a game of gothic horror. I mean, to me, gothic usually implies, you know, an older setting or late 1800s or something. But it could be anywhere. Do you guys have any strong feelings about well, what time period I we ought to say set this game in? To be gothic, technically, I mean, yeah, you could make it any time period. But, you know, for the spirit of the that genre whatever um yeah I, w- I was also thinking older but maybe we it could be as late as you know like the 1920s or something um and i only am saying that because yeah, yeah, I... it's easier to uh think of stuff like when we play more historical games like Sometimes you don't know what's been invented yet. Like, at least the 1920s, like, uh, I have some right. idea. Um, yeah, if it's the 1920s, we can yeah. use our cell phones. Thank God. I went to so, school, man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Does anyone, uh, is everybody okay with setting our, our game in the 1920s? Sure. It still feels okay. gothic. I don't see any, to anyone. Me. Yeah, you can still be kind of gothic-y. Hey, basically anywhere where there's a graveyard and a mausoleum also, and a demon and everything. Because well, I like uh, the 1920s. You know, like Call of Cthulhu, you know, we've played games, our Halloween games. Some of them have been they have, they have yep. been set in the 20s or 30s, and uh, those are all, you know, very gothic. That's right, you bimbo. <laughs> You're, you're but I bet he's your bimbo. Yeah. 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 If you haven't heard any of our Halloween specials, please scroll back through and you can hear us doing all kinds of period appropriate slang. And so I like the 1920s. And I, I hear, I've heard two British accents already. And uh, so I would like to suggest we go ahead and set our game in England. But I don't have, you know, English people could be anywhere. Britannia rules the waves, right? They could be anywhere in the whole world in the 1920s almost. And it would be, we could be in India. We could be, you know. Well, uh, Orchid, so. Orchid Calibre is a southern belle. But she can certainly travel to England because she has quite the vendetta against this slutty succubus demon. Just so you know. Yes, she does. So I think England sounds perfectly appropriate and because I use this you know what we just used our little village of Sourhampton in our last game a fictional village of Sourhampton we can pretend that it's that same village Sour, you know just further Sour on Shire. in the future Sour Sourshire <laughs> yeah it's now it's, it's now become Sourshire 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 Sour Sour yeah Sourshire okay so Sour we're going to be in Sourshire, England, in the night in the nineteen twenties. Okay, and as I say, most of our action will take place in that graveyard, in the mausoleum, in the tomb, and gosh, I don't know what else. Oh, well, there's an important part we're supposed to tell how and why, but we could do that in character. So we might as well just jump in. I picture a classic dark and stormy night with the camera zooming in on the graveyard there's some bats that fly across the moon and there's a big family mausoleum in this graveyard and I think probably it's the mausoleum of the Derip family <laughs> and uh, yes, they, they're related to the Dekusis they came over in the Norman invasion they changed their name for a variety of reasons after a terrible song was written about the Dekusi family it got spread far and wide. And <laughs> so Derip was such a more dignified name. But, yeah, we can we can focus in. And the camera kind of travels through the graveyard, goes past a few gravestones, and we can see this, this family mausoleum, the, the 
mausoleums are normally closed, but tonight I picture probably open, and you can see the candlelight inside. There's mini candelabra set up to where it's fairly bright in there. And that is where the gentleman who summoned you all here, Erasmus Derip, he summoned you here, and uh, you were all here in the mausoleum with him. When the camera goes in the mausoleum door, uh, there, of course, are multiple niches in the walls where there are some older coffins. There's probably a few sitting out on pedestals as well, and perhaps a bottle of wine or two in a little basket. And uh, and I'm going to picture Erasmus Derib. He, he may not sound like Vincent Price, but he certainly is going to look like him. He'll have that not salt and pepper gray hair, but like Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four gray, where just the temples are gray, right? But the top isn't. He probably has like a really high hairline, like a widow's peak, and a pencil thin mustache. I imagine him wearing like a smoking jacket style robe for some reason. And uh, like a long cigarette holder. And as you were all walking in, it's like, greetings, greetings. I'm so glad you are able to join me here. I'm sure we all know why we are here. Yes. And uh, it, just in, ca- in case we don't, however, let us introduce ourselves to one another. And you, my lovely friend... Orchid yeah. caliber. Perhaps you could... Well, maybe, first of all, Lynn, you could explain what you look like, maybe, and then uh, you can tell us in character why Orchid has had a problem with his demon, how the demon ruined her life. And since we are being transparent, we'll let you know we're occasionally having trouble where Lynn cuts in and out and we can't hear everything she says, but it's going to record everything she says, so we're going to do our best. So... Lynn, what is Orchid? How do you imagine Orchid Caliber looking? I imagine, um, first of all, this will make sense once I go into character, and it also makes sense with my uh, calamity. Um, Orchid is wearing a wedding dress. She is wearing a wedding dress. Okay. Um, She has, of course, uh, you know, uh, I would say very full updo with curls cascading down, dark hair dark eyes um, and a little fan a little mm-hmm. southern southern bell fan okay okay so miss I assume it is miss Caliver through many lengthy researches I have found that you have been impacted by I our mutual have. adversary would you care yes would you care well yes. you're very intense aren't you You've, I can see her nostrils flaring right. Yes. <laughs> yes. I can see the whites of her eyes all the way around. True sign of insanity. However, it's not your fault, my dear, and together we will defeat our adversary. Perhaps you will regain your sanity, but tell us, your new companions, why it is that this terrible demon, the demon Firiel, has caused you so much well, I'll discomfort. Tell you why. I met the love of my life, Bartholomew Winslow. And he promised me the moon. And he promised me the stars. And he promised me that he would love me forever. And we were supposed to get married. And then this demon slut, she came and she she charmed him with her demon charms. And she took him away from me. He ran off with her. And I'm here to get my revenge. Oh, dear. Very well. I hope that revenge will be yours. And you you have my... You have my sorrow. And my pity. frightening. But more importantly, you have my support. I don't know why we had to come here. Now, you... Couldn't we have gathered, you know, in a nice, safe study room and and a house, you know, a cozy manner of... uh, Why did we have to come to this dreary graveyard? Because I think that dark places are the appropriate venue for dark business. And we must do battle with this demon somehow. So you, sir, I gather from your trepidatious nature that you must be 
the gentleman whom my researchers have identified as Chadwick Southwark. Is that, that true? That is sir? very true. Okay, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you picture him, and then in character you can tell us about why you've tangled with the demon um, Viriel. Okay. So how, yeah. How the demon is ruined. Well, your I life. picture him as a skinny guy with kind of um, <clears throat> curls in his hair. Um, and, uh, yeah, just some springy curls, like g- golden blonde curls, and uh, dressed very nicely in a suit. He's very dapper. Maybe some okay. some little... So tell me. Uh, mm-hmm. Those little round eyeglasses, like the lenses are kind of yeah, small, and they kind of yeah. sit on the tip of your nose. Yeah, well, they call that a pince... I don't know how to say this in French. What would that be, Ryan? Like pince-nez, or how would a Frenchman say that? You do the best French accent. You, like, mm-hmm. pinch your nose. Take um, I... You'd have to spell it for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it doesn't really matter. I think we got a little type of glasses that pinch your nose. He looks a but, little bit... Now okay. I'm picturing so tell a me, little bit friend. Ichabod Crane. I'm a, I might have actually stolen that whole look. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Well, tell me, friend Chadwick, how has the demon Viriel impacted your life? Well, I believe this demon has possessed me on a number of occasions and has made me do horrendous acts that I, well, speaking very uh, rudely to my dear wife um, (laughs) and... (laughs) Yes, to shred, you say. The dreadful things that come out of my mouth, you wouldn't believe. And even I even gave my young son a smack. Fortunately, it was not a hard smack, but I would never lay a finger on that <laughs> that little boy who I cherish, and I, I must have been possessed. I also went out and slept with prostitutes. And I know for sure that I must have been possessed when I did that. Because this, the very thought of being unfaithful to my wife makes me sick in the stomach. And I don't even know what else I might have done while possessed. But I cannot take it anymore. I want to be rid of this demon. Well, and hopefully we all shall be. Finally, by process of elimination, I see that you, sir, must be Percival. Yeah, Scorbank. that's me. Very well. Now, so Ryan, why don't you tell us a little bit how, how you how you picture his uh, so his he's appearance. um kind of tall and uh, skinny and um. His you can't even see like what color his hair is because he's got one of these like taxi driver hat type hats on you know Flat and he's got hat. like yeah and right, um, right. he's wearing uh, like slacks and like a button up shirt with a bow tie but he's got this large collared like houndstooth coat on um, over it um, nice. and. Um, yeah, and he, but he looks—he looks youngish, probably early twenties. And uh, so, tell me, friend Percival, how has the evil demon Firiel impacted your oh, life? Oh, I don't even believe in the demon. It's not real. I don't think so. But when I went and talked to the fortune teller lady down the street she told me that the reason that when I was a child when I was I was supposed to go on the that uh, the Titanic don't you know and I I, I, well, I was just a child and I didn't go I gave my ticket I gave my ticket to someone else and they died and and supposedly she said it was because of the demon I don't believe that at all 
She says, "Very well." Demon made the iceberg like sink the boat or something. I see you are a man who believes in nothing. The demon could have perhaps you will believe um, steered the Titanic towards the boat or possessed the captain. These things happen. So, I don't know why you don't believe in this demon. Uh, you surely Probably will. seduce the captain. Or seduce the captain, yes. She's a slut. Mm. Yes. Well, the demons can be extremely seductive. I myself, as a young man, dabbled in the dark arts. I was young, impressionable. I had read some strange books out of Babylonia. I'm a scholar of ancient languages. I thought I would do something to prolong my life. So I, to my great shame, made a deal with the demon Firiel, and I find that in a staggering irony, my life has not been prolonged, but I age now a year every day. If I'm, if I'm, I will be dead within 30 days at the most. And I, therefore, I must figure out a way to defeat this demon and undo this terrible curse that I have placed upon myself. Luckily, I have here this ancient weapon, a sword of one of my ancestors. It is said that this sword was once wielded long ago by Arthur Brown, the bastard son of someone important. And I have it here in my family, in my family uh, estate, and I've brought it here tonight. And hopefully the power in this sword will help me. I see, uh, Chadwick, I see that you have uh, a weapon of your own there. Would you care to tell us about it? I am armed with a revolver, and it once belonged to the infamous... Robin Hood. No, just kidding. <laughs> he used to shoot people point blank in the face with it. <laughs> no, uh, this is a was given to me by my father, and I'll let you know I am not afraid to use this weapon. I know how to shoot it. I know how to load it and all that. I'm quite familiar with firearms and. Well, I'm hoping that this demon can be harmed by projectiles. It might not be the case. But if it possesses someone, hopefully not one of us, but I just wanted to let you know that I will not hesitate to fire upon you if that's what it takes. Are you sure you know how to shoot that thing? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah? Don't ask me to demonstrate. Wouldn't want that. Well, you said you know how to load it and everything. Well, I've always, I've always been interested in guns, but I, I don't... I don't... I don't have any. I don't even know how you got it here, because we don't have a lot of guns here in uh, England. Can I touch it? Um... You want to touch my gun? I just want to stroke it a bit. <laughs> I suppose... <laughs> I suppose... You may stroke it. Just don't move the barrel. Don't roll it. I just want to see how know, it works. You can stroke it. It has, <laughs> has different chambers where the bullets are. And if you move the roundy part... Uh, and <laughs> then the bullet might not come out of the barrel. So when you stroke it, and also it has a a thumb rest on the the uh, back side, I believe. Um, don't don't move that. That's for mm. my uh, ease of firing. Oh, you you mean the little bit right there? Oh, yeah, I won't touch that one. And the roundy bit, it's got... Oh, I see the bullets in it. Oh, that's fancy. Oh, yes. <laughs> now, I see, sir, 
Percival, my friend, you have a, a bag there of your own. It appears to be almost a, a doctor's bag or a scientific bag. What is that you have? Yeah, I've got, of well, course, it's a, it's a first aid kit. I've got, um, you know, some bandages and um, such. Some, uh, mm. a needle, you know, some, some thread so we can s- sew up any injuries, that kind of thing. Have you the slightest idea how to use any of that? Not a fucking clue. Yes, I thought as much. Well, hopefully when the time comes, you'll both put what you brought with you to good use. And my lovely dear friend Orchid, I see you have their tools of a holy or occult nature. Can you explain them in greater detail for us? Yes, I have several things that are useful against the occult, including salt, salt, salt is for protection from the demon. Salt. I have yes, holy sweet. water. I also have a crucifix that I wear around my neck, and I also have a vial mm-hmm. of the saliva of a virgin. Oh, I could have given uh, you some of that. A vial of this. <laughs> Are you a virgin, lady sir? never tells. No. <laughs> oh, a virgin. Okay. Excellent, excellent. These tools should serve us well. And then just then, I picture, you know, the thunder. Let's not forget, it's a stormy night. It has to be, right? Thunder, and the, the door was still open a little bit. Wind blows in, and all the candles flicker. And so, Erasmus will go over and close the door. Now, we have a problem ahead of us. We have gathered here to resolve the situation and defeat the demon Firiel, our adversary. However, despite my own occult knowledge, I have very little idea how to go about doing this. Now, I do have some things in my background that may allow us to summon a demon, maybe even summon Firiel herself. However, I am loath to do so immediately for a variety of very good reasons. We know not what we face. Do any of you, this is why I brought us here together, sir, none of us by ourselves can handle this. Does anyone here have any ideas on how we can proceed in our mission how we can proceed to free ourselves of this demon or get revenge. My and and my yeah. expertise ahead, is in science. So if I'm to uh, help out in this uh, area at at all, I th- I believe it it's it's going to be um, something you know in the scientific realm. Not so much in the paranormal. I see. Perhaps we could use science somehow against the paranormal. But that remains to be seen. Does anyone else have any ideas of how we could arm ourselves better or gain further information, perhaps? Well, I don't even think anything's going to show up if you try to summon it. But if it does, I'll kick it in the balls. Uh, ah, but very well, now, very well. do female demons have testicles? Well, it don't matter much if she got testicles or not. I'll still kick her in the balls, or where there would be balls, had she have balls. <laughs> because, you see, in science, testicles and balls are um, <laughs> only, as you should know... Um, attached to the female gender. (laughs) (laughs) Sir, I believe you have misspoken. Uh, Now, uh... I believe you're confused. You're quite confused. (laughs) Now now you can edit that out. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Uh... I, I believe we will take your statement as it was intended. But, w- well, but my point was, I mean, if she don't have balls, assuming she don't have balls, I could still b- just boot her in the cooter. 
<laughs> now, I say <laughs> that type of language makes me <clears throat> think you might be the one possessed. I, I don't care for that language at all. <laughs> Sorry. But I get, I, I get your point, well, maybe of we course. Could, yeah. um, it's a demon that we're dealing with. Yeah. Yes. So only. Yes, it is. Do you have any thoughts I on this matter, my dear Orchid? This matter. She obviously needs to be trapped and then banished back to hell. And the items that I have will help us do that. We will trap her in a circle of salt, and the holy water will drive the spirit out. Or perhaps it will just hurt her physically, as will the crucifix and the saliva of a virgin. I just, we'll just hit the bitch with everything we've got. Okay, very well. I like your attitude. She'll now, die screaming! Ideally. She'll die screaming! <sighs> okay, calm down. There, 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 my dear. Everything will be okay. okay. Everything will be fine, we hope, and we pray. However, we have a long night ahead of us. So what is your recommendation, that we summon her here and then do battle with her? Is that your idea, Orchid? Yes. That is precisely what I think we should do. Percival, do you agree with this? Will you be booting this demon in the cooter? Well, like I said, I don't think it's going to work, but if, if, if something appears and um, it's got a physical form that I can attack, I'll kick its arse. Well, I'll try anyway. Right. Chadwick, sir, being a man, you will certainly try, and as, as I, I will, of course, attempt to do battle with my family's sword as well. I ask you, my friend Chadwick, as a man of science... Do you have any other alternative ideas? Well, I'm very concerned about possession. As soon as we conjure this demon, it could very well enter into any one of us. And I just wish there was some way we could protect ourselves. I have an idea. We use the gun. Whoever can shoot the gun... Perhaps we should figure that out as well. But we use the gun to kill this thing, to bring her down. We first, though, coat the bullets, or the slugs, in holy water and the saliva of a virgin. Because a gun itself may not be enough. But with these things that I know, I know, they are poisonous to this demon whore. If we treat the bullets with these, and perhaps we should coat your sword as well. Perhaps bullets, holy water, and the sword with the saliva of a virgin, and that will surely, surely take this thing out. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good idea, idea. but now you got me wondering what if she's hot. Well, (laughs) obviously she's hot. She stole my fiance, <laughs> and that's another reason why she just needs to die, die, die. <laughs> well, not say, yourself, my I mean, you're frightening me. Yeah, <laughs> you are rather <laughs> easily frightened. I'm afraid, but <laughs> but well, you know, I mean, I don't. Uh, maybe maybe she's nice. I don't know. No. No. I mean, demon's probably not very nice, typically. No, you are entirely naive. Have yes, you seen she's... what was capable, what I was capable of when in possession? You would know. Exactly! You would know the cruelness of this demon. Chadwick was forced to do things he would never do. She ran off with my, per- my Bartholomew. And she wrecked the Titanic! Well, allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> was not proven in a court of law, of law or anything. Screw court. 
No, my friends, the only court of law for the demon Firiel is us. We, my friends, must serve as judge, jury, and executioners. And I believe that Orchid's plan to coat our weapons with holy water and the saliva yes. of virgins is about the best plan I can think of, or that anyone has thought of. I, I do not... I do not disagree with this plan. However, we must be very careful because the holy water and the blood, or the, the saliva of the virgins is precious and we don't have much of it. So we must be very careful in coating yes. the bullets. And now, this will be where we have our first actual game mechanic where we will try to do that, you know, without spilling or wasting the holy water or the saliva of virgins. So who would like to take the lead in actually applying well let's say let's start with the bullets, you know, who would like to actually try to put the holy water and virgin spit onto the bullets in the uh, chest. It's my revolver. gun and I'm holding it. So and I believe to get the bullets out of the gun you must uh fire randomly <laughs> until it is empty. <laughs> and then you can collect them. And uh, no, I, I I do think um, actually that would not be great because I think the impact is so forceful it renders the bullet unusable. So to get the bullets out, I do believe you touch this spinny thing and hopefully they fly out. Well, there's a button. You see the button? <laughs> oh, not that button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, no, that really happened. I was game mad. That really happened again. No one got hit, but it's like we all jumped, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Now we have only not five bullets one. left. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Look at you, nasty whoever would boy. like to uh, actually apply it. No, I think push if you the, push that button, the little spinny thing will fall out, and then you can get them out. Push the spinny thing out and drop the bullets into your hand. Yeah. Every southern belle knows how to defend herself. Oh, she's an American. My papa taught me that at his knee. Look at you call yourselves men. <laughs> well, in that case, go ahead and drop the bullets into your hand there. And if uh, you, Orchid, would be so good as to bring the holy water... Perhaps we coat the bullets in holy water and we will coat my sword in the saliva of a virgin. That appeals to me on many levels for some reason. Pervert. So, uh, who, who's going to actually do the coating of the bullets? Um, I'm trying to think. I doubt uh, our boon would help us. Um, yeah, I don't think a boon would. I mean, the. I don't think a boon would necessarily help us. What we really need to know is, do we think it should be relatively easy to coat some bullets in some water? It seems like it wouldn't be super hard, right? No. No, I mean, you just dip them in, really. I mean, I mean no, yeah. Right, right. So, so whoever thinks they're going to actually dip the bullets in the holy water, just to, there's a pretty good uh, chance, I think, of that happening. I think it's an easy task. And in this game, if it's an easy task but could still lead to big consequences, which this would, then whoever's doing it would draw a card from the deck, and you would need a number card or a joker. Now, that's about a 78% chance of success, according to Jacob Marx. I haven't done the math. Now, he might be thinking of us having a full deck, but uh, so we're going to draw a card to see if... Uh, and I guess it's really kind of... Chadwick and Orca doing this together, I imagine. So we're going to draw a card, and we need a number card or a joker to come out of this deck. So I'm going to draw the card and hold it up. And here it is. It is not a number card or a joker. Ace of it is spades. the Ace of Spades. It is the dreaded Ace of Spades. And oh, so, oh, unfortunately, oh. Oh, you're there's dropping. a fumble. Oh. Perhaps uh, the oh no, they're gonna go <laughs> off their bombs. The, the, the holy water, <laughs> and uh, yeah, the holy water is unfortunately spilt into oh. the ground, and it you see it sinking into the flags, you know, between no! the, the cracks of the flagstones of the floor. 
Mausoleum. <laughs> Madam, please. And uh, perhaps Calm you've been... down, Madam. <laughs> You're going to faint. Mm. No, or oh, I'm going to faint. Oh, you <laughs> calm down, <laughs> please. Well, our only hope we have left is the the saliva of the Virgin applied to this family blade, the blade of Arthur Brown. And therefore, if we would be very, very careful, I will lay the blade here on this coffin, and we'll sprinkle very lightly. Here we go. I'm drawing another card. We just need a number card. This shouldn't be that hard in a deck of cards. I haven't looked at it yet. I'm holding up to the camera, and hey, look at that. We have the Ten of Spades. So we dig at a number card... Ah, success. So we see that we have successfully, at least, succeeded in uh, putting the virgin saliva onto the ancestral blade. And, well, well, my friends. I wish I could say... Now, the question... Yes, uh, I'm sorry, I wish I could say I could test this saliva to make sure it's really from a virgin, but I... I'm not sure I have a test for that. I mean... Um... I know there are some... Some very ancient... Um... Mostly folklore, I believe, to test for such things, but, um... Where did you say you you procured this saliva? It's not from yourself. You were married, after all. I was not married. Well, you were engaged. Were engaged, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, and I am a proper southern lady. They uh, we would not consummate before marriage. So, yes, in fact, which oh. means we have more if we want to use it on the bullets. So, y- you have just uh, s- spit into a vial? Yes. Yes, she... Yes, she is well, a see, factory now of Now, there is a way spit. to test for that. Uh, there is a... Uh, now, it comes biology again. There is a uh, pot... And now, I'm sure of the, it, this is a female pot this time. It is called the hymen. And I believe only females have this hymen. Now, if you would be so kind... <laughs> drop no. <laughs> I've taken... Uh, I think I've you're possessed this, again, Chadwick. <laughs> as far as I want to go... <laughs> I will we'll, okay. we'll take your word for it. Uh, now, friends, all of this will be useless if we do not have a demon before us to fight. So, I believe we should begin preparations for the summoning. Do you agree? Yes. Um, now, since we don't know... <clears throat> I was going to uh, give it my best guess. Something like... Ferial, ferial, get herial, or uh, <laughs> something of that nature. I don't know. Anyone else yes, have a, a guess? We can draw oh. draw a pentagram in oh, the yes. area that we wish to summon her, and then do the chant. I think that sounds reasonable. Yes, I believe that is reasonable as well. I do have these old books. Uh, that we just may be able and as I said I have dealt with the demon before I hesitate to use the same method twice however we did not have salt last time very well let us draw a pentagram upon the floor friends let us ready ourselves to summon the demon Firiel but I'm afraid we'll have to summon the demon Firiel on our next episode well, it's and not going to work anyway. So now that we've uh, gone, th- <laughs> now that we've gone through all the uh, you know setup and everything, I mean, we're a little more solid on our characters and what we're up to. So join us again next week, and I will keep the discard pile separate from the other pile throughout this week. So join us next time, and we will summon the demon Furiel, who's been getting a lot of screen time on <laughs> Goonies World lately. Uh, those of you who have listened to our last uh, adventure realize we've taken a lot of elements out of our Heroes of Sherwood Forest game, probably just because we don't have anything planned and it's fresh in our minds and we're in England. 
So we will work on that next time. And Lynn, thanks for being with us this time. Thanks for having me. And thanks to our listeners again for getting us to 10K. And uh, hopefully we'll get to another 10K even quicker. That's right. And Chris Geralt, if you're listening, I'm still going to demand that you come on this this show sometime uh, and join us. So we'll see everybody next week. Good night. Hey, everybody. If you like our podcast, don't forget to leave us a good rating and or review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Spotify, or wherever you're able. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at Goonies underscore world. And check out our website at GooniesWorldPodcast.com. Email us at GooniesWorldPodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening.